Hi, welcome to Old Guys Gentlemen Flex Fountain Pens. And today I'm going to be covering Waterman's Glass Cartridge Pen, which is kind of an unusual pen. It was made around uh, 1936-ish. It was made in the United States, but primarily sold in France. And it's um, this spitting image of a Waterman number no. three, except you'll see that there's no no lever sack fill, and instead you can barely see it, but there's a um, there's a section here that comes off. Let me show you a little bit more here. I think it's a really pretty pen. The nib looks nice. Gives you no indication that it was only available in France. And by the way, I'll show you this, but it's a very wet noodle, extra fine kind of pen. You're my favorite kind of pen. But but what I really like about this, in addition to the way it looks and everything, is you unscrew this. Let's see if I can do this without getting ink everywhere. And there's a nice glass it was sold by uh, Jeff Waterman. Uh, I guess that's a, um, a division of Waterman located in France. The glass cartridge was made in France, as can be seen here. But it holds a lot of uh, ink, which is nice. And it's fairly easy to fill. I use a, um, I have a dropper, but uh, droppers just don't hack it in a small opening like that. So I've got a uh, kind of a hypodermic that I use. So let's put this back. So ink capacity is really good. It's like a silver black marble finish. Be careful I don't uh, gall the threads here. It's really kind of a pretty pen. Uh, how about some of the dimensions? Uh, posted, it is 15.5 um, centimeters. Capped, it is 12 centimeters. Uh, unposted, it's 11.5 centimeters. And I can write with it like this, and I think some people would be fine with this, but as I've said in all my videos, it just, it just feels more secure in my hand if, it's, um, if there's a little bit of a counterweight up against this right here. So that's the way I, I like to write with it. It's extra, extra fine and can go up to, um, you know, when I say three bold plus plus, well, that's probably about right, I guess, on this one. Uh, I wouldn't want to take it that much further than that, and the feed system starts to choke a little bit at its broadest thing. And again, as I said in most of them, I will mainly use this area right here for my writing. Definitely a wet noodle. A little more writing here to show you. I had pulled the cartridge out, so that's why I think you're seeing a gap there. So let's try this again down here. With the proverbial hello. By the way, the ink that I'm using is my favorite set of inks now seems to be the Pelican 4001. It's a little bit wetter in the flow, but a little bit easier to dry. It doesn't stay wet as long. And this one happens to be um, the Blau Schwarz Blue Black, which is a little bit hard to find. Not sure if it's like one of my favorite inks, but it does remind me a lot of the inks that I grew up with in the cartridge pens, um, the, the plastic cartridge pens that I grew up in. Uh, how about a little bit more? Just normal writing.
I don't know what I was thinking about doing that. Sometimes I get mesmerized. It's pretty responsive. Just a really nice flexor. Maybe it's just a timing issue. Also writing at a weird angle because it got my microphone right over here. So this is going to be heavily edited at the end, but I hope you uh, got some value out of this. Uh, it's a really nice pen that is what 70 plus years old, and it's got a lot of life in it. It looks really nice. Made in the USA, but only sold in France. Cool pen. So hope you got some value out of that. And um, until next time, 